Hey, what's up everybody? It's Dowsi here from The Mint Method. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I consider the most fundamental aspect of language learning, and that is being able to channel the spirit of the language. And underneath that, the spirit of play. And before we get into that though, let's talk a bit about the conventional methods for learning, which I critique as being too cerebral. So you say, I wanna learn a language. Well, what's a language? I guess words and grammar are great. Let me do some flashcards on these words over here. Let me get a book or um, an app to learn the rules of grammar. And then let me translate over and over again until I have an understanding of how these words kind of relate to my first language. That's all well and good. You might learn how to read that way, but then you show up in a conversation and someone's talking to you and you can't understand. You can't speak without stuttering and mumbling and all that good stuff. And you get stuck in your head fundamentally. Why? Because you trained yourself to get stuck in your head. The cerebral conventional approach, that's what it does to you. And this, there are cerebral elements to language. You do kind of have to think about stuff when you're making a point. And like when I'm speaking right now, I'm trying to analyze and how can I convey this communication to people more effectively? That's a kind of a cerebral thing. But more fundamental than that cerebral aspect is the physical aspect. Notice how to convey my point, I'm using my hands. My face is active. I'm doing stuff like this and like this and like that and like this. Probably not so much that last one. But the point is that it's a physical act that we're doing here. And of course, if you've been following the MIM method, you know that that's what we tend to focus on in our programs. What exactly are the details of that physicality? How do you place your tongue? What's my face doing? How are my hands moving? These are things that if you focus on, you'll get way more bang for your buck versus if you train yourself to get stuck in your head. Training yourself to be in the body gets you more in the moment and more attentive to the actual flow of language. But there's something even deeper than the physicality and that is what I call the spirituality. I'm not using this term necessarily to refer to religious or metaphysical concepts, so they are related. I'm using the term spirit to refer simply to an intangible pattern of being or behaving in the world that can animate different physical substrates. So the spirit of American English is manifesting itself through me right now, not just in my mouth and how I'm constructing these words, but also the spirit of the US. There's different ways I communicate and how I express myself that are part of the culture that I come from. So I didn't invent English. I didn't invent the American culture. I didn't invent any of these things. Uh, I'm just a vessel for that spirit that's animating me right now. That's what I mean by I use the word spirit. It's just a pattern that can operate in different people in different forms. So taking it to our goals here, we're trying to learn a new language. So when I say I want to learn Spanish, do I say, oh, okay, let me just learn the, the vocab and grammar for Spanish. If I take that cerebral approach and I get into conversation, it's gonna look like this. Um, hola, uh, mi nombre es y, um, y dao, y dao sa, yo, yo, soy, um, yo, yo soy americano y um, uh, quier, um, quis, no, qui, uh, quiero hablar um, español contigo. Or if I was learning French, I'd be like, um, uh, 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 je, uh, je m'appelle uh, Idausa, uh, je, uh, je suis um, American, uh, American, American, masculine, American. See what's happening here? I'm stuck in my head. And not only that, I'm not really there. I'm not really alive with the language. You know, it's like you caught me in the middle of like doing a French exam or a Spanish exam and you just kind of came into my brain while I was trying to answer the questions on a test, right? I'm not actually engaging. I'm not actually flowing and being with you. Now contrast that to instead of me speaking Spanish like, uh, yo, uh, yo soy americano, and I'm speaking instead of like, hola, yo soy mexicano. Bueno, puedo hablar contigo, por favor. Y después, cuando tenía mucha gente aquí en la calle bailando, tocando la música y todo, or if I'm speaking French with you and I'm like, oui, en fait, uh, je suis américain, mais j'ai parlé français avec les gens ici pour ce uh, season, right? Well, I'm speaking Portuguese to you like this. Uh, eu sou, um, uh, eu quero falar, ou, olha, quero falar contigo. Pode falar comigo também? Que isso, gente? Que isso? What's happening there? 
in the one example, I'm just doing a bunch of analytical stuff. In the other, I'm channeling something. There's a spirit of Paris, of Guadalajara, Mexico, of um, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. These are spirits which I encountered through my travels and through my interactions with people. And then I welcomed those spirits into my own mind and body and allowed them to speak through me. So again, this might sound kind of woo-woo and stuff, but it's not. It's an actual technical process. And one half of that technicality is the physicality. You have to kind of physically create the space for those spirits to enter in the motor memory, in my mouth, in my facial expression, in my body motions. These are all things that you probably already know we break down into very deep detail in our program. But what I've been focusing a lot in the past two years as I brought on students to coach is this deeper spiritual aspect because I found that people would spend a lot of time going through my programs, learning how to pronounce these R's, learning how to get the melody right, how to mimic, and if they you know, put in the work, they can do a really good job at mimicking a phrase, mimicking a word with a good accent, with good pronunciation. But then I started coaching people and putting them with native speakers and seeing what they do in conversation, and then I noticed that, okay, great, in the physical program, you're able to do everything, but now in the conversation, all that kind of goes out the window and you revert back to your old, you know, American or Australian or whatever your native identity is. And you're not really getting into the flow. You're not really getting into the spirit of things. So I started to think, ah, okay, more fundamental than vocab and grammar, even more fundamental than hearing and pronunciation. I need to figure out how to get people to get into these more psychological elements. And that's when I started to map things out and I discovered that there's, of course, the spirit of the people, which I can break down to as much as I possibly can and how they're pronouncing things, how they're moving their body. But in order for you to truly embody that spirit, you need to access an even deeper spirit, the spirit of play. And this spirit of play is a very, very profound, deep spirit. And you know that because it doesn't just exist in us humans, it ex in every single human who's ever existed, but also mammals. I always make a point if I see two dogs kind of in dog parks or whatever playing with each other to stop and watch and kind of watch what they're doing. They go, rawr, 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 dip the butt a little bit. Rawr, rawr. And I'm like, what's going on here? It's just a, such a fascinating thing to observe, just dogs playing. And what they're doing is, the reason why it's called play is because they're, they're, they're taking on an, an identity or a persona that's not actually really what's happening because technically they're fighting each other, right? Technically they're being violent. They're, they're biting each other, they're going into like compromising positions and getting on top of each other and, and, and barking, all that kind of stuff. But they're not really doing those things because this is actually how they're expressing um, love for each other and having these social bonds. So they're playing with that spear. It's a very, very deep, sophisticated thing that you can spend an entire career like studying scientifically. But we won't do that here. We're gonna think about it in the context of us learning a language. When you're playing, when I am learning Portuguese, I can get the pronunciation, I can get the words, but really what I need to do is, is play with that spirit. I need to pretend like I'm a Brazilian person and, and do that. And I'm a very playful person, and I always have been, and I believe that um, some people might be intrinsically more playful than others, but all my experiences interacting with children, it seems to be that children are just unanimously playful. And if I go up to like a three-year-old, I'm like, ah, and he'll be like, ah, and he'll start playing with me, no matter what. But around some time, maybe, honestly, around maybe like when kids turn eight or nine or 10, probably 10-ish, that's when like, if I want to play with them, I gotta, I gotta like work a little harder to get them to actually play. They might be a bit shy or a bit like, uh, kind of thing. So something happens post, uh, you know, a certain age or some, but not all people kind of lose that playfulness. And they're losing something that I think is very, 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 very important, very, very profound to our human experience. But not just that, very practical and essential to our purposes here as language learners. You need to cultivate the spirit of play. So going a bit more into the details, how do you do that? What is that spirit of play? Well, I break that down, if you can visualize here. I have the spirit of play. I break that down into three branches here. And I have what I call the pro-social spirit, which is a spirit of friendliness, we can just kind of say in general. Uh, something that actually makes a social setting better when you have a pro-social spirit involved. So I'll quickly demonstrate that just kind of in English here. This is a non or an anti-social spirit if I'm speaking to you like this. 
Yeah, so um, I'm learning English now, and uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing, right? <laughs> You're like, well, okay. Versus a pro, a pro social spirit, I'm like, hello, I'm learning English. What's your name? Do you want to practice English with me? Oh, that's interesting. Where are you from? Hey, huh. No, there's a different spirit in that interaction. That's what I call a pro social spirit, and I break that one down into three basic energies. You want to be grounding people, so you're not like erratic and all over the place. Like, hey, what's going on, buddy? But you're calm, relaxed. Your movements are predictable and relaxing. You're warming people, so your eyebrows and your eyes might be like this. Versus, you don't want to be chilling people. You want to be warming people, right? Warming, and then also the third feature is uh, uplifting. So I'm sure we've all been around people who are kind of Debbie Downers, and you come in like, oh, what a great day. You're like, yeah, too bad, you know, the economy sucks or whatever, right? You're like, uh, this guy's bringing it down. So why do you want to be uplifting, warming, and grounding? Because this is kind of like the foundation for a playful environment. When you don't have that, then people don't want to play. They don't feel safe to play. Play and safety are in integrally uh, related. So that's the first part of it. So you have being pro-social over here, Second sub-spirit is being dynamic. So for play, you want to be able to have a lot of intensity in your interaction. So I'm speaking to you like this. Yes, uh, my name is Hidalsa and I use the same tone of voice and the same facial expression continually when I speak. And it's not that dynamic or engaging or entertaining for people. Versus if I'm like, hey, I'm Hidalsa and I'm kind of moving around a lot while I'm talking. And that kind of makes things a bit more engaging when you're listening to me, doesn't it? So that's what I mean by the, the dynamic aspect. And then the third part is mimetic. Mimetic is when you're mimicking people all the time. And this is particularly part, uh, important, of course, for language. When I'm listening to someone speak in a language I'm learning, I'm constantly mimicking them. Not necessarily out loud, but in my mind or under my breath. And then when it comes my turn to speak, I'm stealing their expressions and trying them out for myself. And I'm, I'm basically like trying to become that person while I'm speaking. And that is fundamentally what play is all about, is uh, becoming something beyond what you're used to being. So put that all together, pro-social, dynamic, mimetic. This is the spirit of play. This is the spirit that all children possess. And the secret to learning a language. A lot of you, every single one of you have this spirit inside of you. Um, but for whatever reason, maybe through childhood experiences or whatnot, it's been repressed, it's been kind of wrapped around, but I promise you it was in there. I'm not going into detail in this video about the practical ways that we can develop that, but I will in the next video, which I'll be releasing in a few days. This is part of a larger uh, campaign. I'm going to be developing something called the conversation game that I'll be releasing soon. And in a week or two after this video is being uh, published, I'm going to do a beta test with people to kind of come and tweak the details of this game with me, essentially as a system for helping people develop their conversational ability full spectrum. So not just learning how to speak uh, with grammar and vocabulary, but all these things we just discussed. How do you actually develop in a systematic way your spirit of play so that you can develop in a systematic way the spirit of your target language, get it infused into you, if you're able to do this, I promise you, the entire language learning journey becomes not just way more smooth and effective, but also way more enjoyable, way more fun. I personally find it way better than, you know, sitting at home with my smartphone, you know, translating sentences or sitting in a classroom, like listening to a teacher lecture or like reading a textbook with conjugation charts in it. These things are not just um, ineffective, but they're boring. They're just boring. And what's super, and interesting is being social with people, dynamic, playful, mimetic, fun, and this could be a big overwhelming project for people. So my job as a, as a teacher, as a methodologist, is to break these things down into micro pieces and help you flow your way from the bottom to the top. So in the next video, I'm gonna present to you the conversation game, which is the main tool that we developed to help you do this. So if you like what you see, like, subscribe, share this video to someone you might be interested in, Leave a comment below on what you what you think about it. And then stay tuned for my next video. And um, if you're not on the mailing list as well, join that because then I'll be sharing the information about this new program that I'm releasing soon. So.
Thanks for watching. Have a great day.